GitHub is probably one of the most important tools to learn. It's the largest, most complete development platform in the world. The most popular place to store your remote repository is GitHub, which is owned by Microsoft and is free to use. GitHub. It's not just a platform. It's the foundation beneath much of the modern internet. From your favorite apps to the core powering hospitals, banks and governments. With over 420 million repositories and the global network of 150 million developers, it's the world's most trusted code base ever. But I want you to imagine something. What if GitHub disappears overnight? Billions of lines of code lost. Startups gone. Critical infrastructure broken. Website services tools we rely on every day suddenly offline and the internet will just go into dust. It sounds unthinkable and impossible, right? But in 2018, that scenario came dangerously close to reality. The year was 2018 and it was a beautiful day in San Francisco. Inside the GitHub office, the employees worked as usual, engineers were sipping coffee, screens were filled with code. Just another day in the world's largest code platform. But suddenly, the company's monitoring tool started sending out alerts. At first, no one realized how serious it was. But it turned out to be the biggest DDoS attack in the history of cybersecurity. The attack hit a massive 1.35 terabyte of data per second and overwhelmed GitHub with over 126 million data packets per second. This attack was a wake-up call not just for GitHub, but also for other giants like Facebook, Twitter, Amazon and many more. Some employees didn't even know what the hell was a DDoS attack, so they had to look it up. DDoS, also known as Distributed Denial of Service, is an attack when a lot of fake traffic is sent to a website all at once to overload it or make it completely crash. You can think of it as like flooding a store with so many fake customers that real customers can't get in. These attacks started in 1996 using some basic tricks to flood websites. Later they used a massive network of hack computers called botnets. Those required a lot of effort to manage and maintain. But the GitHub attack introduced something new called amplification. So what is amplification attack? Amplification attack sends a small request to the server that reply with much larger response. These attacks have used systems like DNS or NTP servers in the past, but in GitHub's case, the attackers use a tool called Meme Cache, which was far more powerful, up to 50,000 times the original request size. So what is Meme Cache? Meme Cache is a tool that helps website load faster by storing data in memory instead of fetching it from the database every time. But Meme Cache had a few problems, which made this attack possible. By default, it uses something called the UDP, which does not verify who sends the data. It did not require any password, and it accepts requests from anyone on the internet. This meant that hackers could trick Meme Cache servers into sending massive amount of data to any target. So what the attackers did is they searched the internet for publicly exposed meme cache server, then they stored large pieces of data on those servers, and finally they sent fake requests pretending to be from GitHub. So a tiny 15-byte request could trigger a 750,000-byte reply. At that time, over 100,000 meme cache server worldwide could be exploited like this. When the attack started in less than 10 minutes, GitHub's monitoring tool started the alarm. GitHub's engineer led by Sam Kotler quickly took action and began rerouting the traffic. To fight the attack, GitHub partnered with Akhaimi Prolex, a company specializing in DDoS defenses. Akhaimi Prolex had one of the strongest DDoS protection at that time, with over 20 terabyte per second of capacity. When GitHub was under attack, GitHub traffic was rerouted to Akhaimi Scrubbing Center. These centers remove harmful traffic using multiple layers of analysis. From basic checks to deep packets inspection, traffic was redirected via BGP and DNS, routed to the nearest cleaning center. Once the traffic is scrubbed, clean traffic was returned to GitHub via encrypted channels. This ensured GitHub stayed online even under the heaviest attack. This attack did not just affect GitHub, it showed that thousands of servers all over the world were misconfigured and could be used in attacks. These vulnerable servers were found in the US, China, UK and many other countries. Some big hosting companies like OVH, DigitalOcean and Linode had to fix their system quickly. Many blocked traffic going through UDP port which was 11211. 
The attack also hurt companies that relied on GitHub for their daily works. Development tools, code sharing, and updates were interrupted. At the same time, cybersecurity companies saw a big increase in demand for better protection system.